the stage is Riley. Okay, thank you very much for your introduction, Chris. Um, I'm Riley. It's actually a lot more terrifying, I think, talking in front of your peers than students. So <laughs> bear with me if I kind of blush during this presentation because that's my thing that I like to do. So um, like I said, that I'm going to be taking you through my experience with the blended model. But before I get started on what I went through, I believe I am the only faculty member here that has actually not only um, taught or went to the blended training, but actually taught the first session of Blended. So I want to hear your thoughts before I get into my initial response to the Blended model and my experiences going through it. So if you attended the training or if you just heard about different things, I want to hear what your perspective was initially first. Okay, sure. Yes, okay, great. Sure, yep. Anybody else? Yes. One of my big concerns was just about because there's less face to face uh, time with the students, that uh, like identifying and how to navigate issues if students aren't showing up for the face to face or not doing things online, and how to make sure that we still keep them like going along with the class. Great, thank you. Yes. Sure, Brandon. Technology, how is um, pressing kids and students for coming into the class technology wise, or is that a very kind of hindering your ability to teach and all that? Or is it something more about the students? Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, so as Chris has mentioned as well, I started in my first um, actual semester with Brian and Stratton was in the spring. But what some of you might not know is that was actually my first time formally teaching as well. So not only did I come into learning what I was doing basically in front of the classroom, learning how to lesson plan, learning how to give feedback, learning how to grade papers, learning how to do everything that not only Brian and Strand employees do, but me myself as an instructor. So here I am coming and learning a new model. So when Jim initially asked me to participate in the blending training, I said, yeah, sure, why not? It's just another thing I have to learn, right? So this is really my initial reaction after training. I smile to hide how completely overwhelmed I am. <laughs> I was very nervous, especially looking at the sandboxes. When Leah and I were going through the training, it seemed pretty much that everything makes sense, and then I actually looked at the sandbox. And I said, oh, they have to do all of this stuff on their own. So to Sam's point too, how am I going to make sure that everybody's keeping up with everything? How am I going to make sure that everybody has the skills and technology to be able to keep up with everything? And then how am I going to make sure that that is not interfering with my precious face-to-face -face time? Because I only have three hours a week with these students. Not only three hours a week, but I only had seven weeks to make sure that they did all their assignments too. So just to give you a breakdown of how the blended cycle really worked, I considered it a, a cycle, not by week by week, but really the weeks kind of running in together to complete the full session. So really they started with the before face-to-face -face work. That included things like reading the textbook, um, some presentations, some PowerPoint lecturettes, different things that were going to prep them for that particular topic that we were addressing in that particular week. Then we get into the face-to-face. And as I gradually learned how to uh, make my face-to-face -face really meaningful to the students, what I decided to do is incorporate what, because I was able to actually see. So uh, let me back up a little bit. This is adaptive release as well. So the students were not able to complete the virtual or the after instruction assignments until the before face-to-face -face work was completed, and then after their before virtual was completed. So I was able to see all of the assignments, but the students were not yet, so they couldn't jump ahead. So everything was really planned in each session leading up to that after instruction assignment. So what I learned how to do is to take that after instruction assignment 
and make sure that I'm hitting all the points that they're going to need in order to be successful completing that assignment on their own. So whether it be uh, Excel, I taught the INFT, so Excel I knew that was going to be a little bit more challenging. So I made sure that in my face-to-face -face, I focused on what they were going to have to do to, in order to complete that particular Excel assignment. And then I made sure that they were able to do those skills with my activity. So if they had any questions while doing it, I was able to address it right there face-to-face. -face. Because as we all know, it's easier to address problems and troubleshoot things face-to-face via, or um, instead of, you know, via email and trying to screenshot everything. So that's how the cycle really worked. As I was going through the session as well, so before um, when I heard the term adaptive release and I was trying to figure out how they were going to complete all the assignments after my face-to-face -face session because it seemed like a lot of things that they were going to have to do on their own in order to prep themselves again for the next week. I wasn't really a fan of the adaptive release, honestly. When I first heard of it, when I first saw it, when I first went to the training, I said, well, they should just be allowed to do whatever they want and pick and choose the longer assignments. Maybe that's going to take longer so they know on Wednesday that they have more time to do it, and then they're going to do the little projects in between, you know, on Saturday when they might not have a lot of time if they have, you know, their kids' soccer game or what have you. But then as the session went on, I began to really appreciate the adaptive release. And the reason why is because everything in this, you know, whatever the session it was, so before face-to-face, -face, before virtual, et cetera, prepped them for what they were going to need to do in the assignment. So not only was I prepping them in my face-to-face, -face, but the before virtual and the virtual assignments were more of guided practices in order for them to make sure that they had the skills they needed to complete those assignments. If they would have jumped right to the assignments or jumped into something in the virtual be, if they went to, you know, jumped around to have to run before they even completed their before virtual work, they would have been very confused. Not only that, but maybe they would have flown through the assignment, they were able to get things done, but they weren't doing it properly or the way that we were asking them to do it. So I really started to like the adaptive release a lot. We were also given a few documents when we, um, before we started with the sessions. And one of them was the summary scaffolding. And what this document really did was I highlighted each section. Um, I know it's kind of hard to see, but this is like an example of week two. So week two, it says, what are the course outcomes? What are they supposed to be doing in this particular week? Then this is the before face-to-face -face instruction assessment. So each bullet point outlined what exactly the students were going to be doing. So not only could I go into that session and say, okay, what are they doing before face-to-face, -face? but this broke down exactly what they were going to be doing as well. So I could read this and follow along in the, um, in the shell of what they were supposed to be doing. So this says, okay, they're going to read this particular page, and it actually gives you a time estimation as well. So this should take the student 57 minutes to complete this particular reading in the text if they're, and if they're going to be doing the practicing and the how-to. So in the INFT textbook, it gives you um, what, how to do things, let's say, for example, in Word, and then it says, okay, this is a how-to. Why don't you practice it? So why don't you open up the Word application and go through step-by-step -step what I just told you to do in the text. And I, so each, each bullet point, like I said, has that particular um, assessment in there and the total of time. With the face-to-face -face instruction, it also shows you the link between the face-to-face, -face, before face-to-face, -face, and then what should occur in face-to-face. -face. And that really helped me not only as a new instructor, but in the blended model, because it allowed me to say, okay, they've done this, what do I need to do now in order for them to be successful in these areas? It also gave you uh, different ideas on things that you can do in your classroom. So in this particular one, I know it's kind of hard to see, but it says, um, and what I really like too is it said what they were doing in their other course. So they were taking COM 104 in addition to my course. So this says um, students learned about this in COM 104. So maybe you can tie in what they're learning to in COM 104 and use that in order to make an activity that will be beneficial to them not only in your class, but successful students in both classes as well. And then again, I was able to see, and I was actually very transparent with my students, I told them how long everything was going to take them and how estimated time. So when the students said, well, 
I know we have a lot of assignments in the virtual. I, I just know it. I can feel it. And I don't know if I'm going to have enough time to complete it before next class. I, wrote, I told them the breakdown of each, how long each thing was supposed to take them so they were able to plan out their weeks better. So not only did we have that calendar that we set up for them, and I don't know if everybody is familiar with this, but we had a calendar in our Blackboard session. And it, you were able to place, the instructor was able to place where they um, determined when you were supposed to complete the assignments. And the students could either do that literally, or they can just, let's say, if I said, well, everything's due on Saturday night at you know 11.59. I suggest that you do the before virtual stuff on Wednesday, and then some of the virtual stuff on Wednesday as well, and then some of the virtual stuff on Thursday, and then you should be focusing on your after assignments Friday and Saturday. But if they wanted to do every single thing on Friday and Saturday, they could. But that calendar and this time frame really helped them plan out their week. So if they knew that they had a lot of things going on in the virtual instruction, so let's say um, this is going to take them about a half hour, this will take them about a half hour, same thing. So let's say roughly it's going to take me two hours in my virtual session. I know that I have two hours free on Thursday, so I'm going to make sure I have that vir before virtual stuff done before Thursday. And then I can get to, I can block out two hours on Thursday making sure that my kids are taken care of or nobody's bothering me at that particular time. And then I can focus on that and get to maybe some after instruction assignment if I have time. Or I can plan out, let's say on Friday, I know I have four hours, the kids are at school and I'm able to complete all my assignments then. So that way they had an estimation of how long things were generally supposed to take them so they can plan out their weeks better. We were also given a weekly feedback form, which was also very helpful, especially on our calls. So we, I'm going to get into what the calls consisted of, but we had weekly calls. And the feedback form really helped me kind of lay out and put it on writing. Um, I don't know if anybody went to Allie's session, but she said that um, it helps when sometimes you put your thoughts on the piece of paper. That did that for me. So I was able to say what modifications were needed to um, be made in that scaffolding document. So they said, okay, we know that we have a scaffolding document for you, but we understand that this is the first time we're running it, so maybe you have better ideas or maybe you can put different items in the sections in order to make it more successful for future um, blended classes. Also, what modifications needed to be made to the Blackboard shell? In my particular case, teaching an INFT, we needed a lot of files and links. So I don't know about COM or any of the other math courses, but it was very crucial to me to make sure that the BB shell had every single item in there. So if they needed to do a guided practice on page you know, 149 and they needed this particular file, I had to make sure that that file was in there. And obviously there was a lot of files that needed to be done for my class and a lot of links that had to work out. And that didn't always happen. So it was really helpful to me to say, okay, next time we do this, we have to make sure that this particular assignment has this file and the link actually works because the students will panic and we want to make sure that they're able to not only um, do their assignments with the skills that they learned in the face-to-face, -face, but actually be able to complete the assignments because they have the right tools in order to do so. Um, and also it had a space for any additional comments. So, this was from week one. This is actually my feedback form. And I don't know if you can see, but in the additional comments section, I said, the students had difficulty completing the assignments. I wanted that to be known about week one for several reasons. Um, one, to maybe see if there were too many assignments in week one. Number two, to make sure that the students were completely aware that there was a lot of, there's going to be a lot of things thrown at you, and you just need to you know, take a step back, relax, make sure that, you know, you're going to be okay and you have a lot of support system with you. So I wanted to make that clear that in week one, they're going to have some difficulties. And I want everybody to be aware of that. Now, you can be told that and then when it, you actually experience it, it's kind of different, I think. But preparing yourself that students are going to have difficulties completing these assignments in week one was crucial, I think. So the call. We had weekly calls on Monday. They lasted about an hour. I wasn't actually able to um, participate on the whole call because I had a class right in the middle of it. But the call that I was able to um, stay on really helped a lot. 
And there are a few different reasons that I identified why the calls helped me. One was to share the difficulties. So I was able to not only express what I was having difficulties with, but I was able to hear the other difficulties that the other instructors were having. Number one, that made me feel like better about myself as an instructor because, okay, everybody's having difficulties, I'm not alone. And it also might have identified something to me that maybe I either didn't have a difficulty with or I didn't even realize that was actually supposed to happen or not supposed to happen. We were also able to share solutions. So like I said, maybe I expressed a difficulty that I had and then the other instructor or um, charity was able to say, okay, well, I actually have a solution for this. So here's how you avoid having a difficulty with that the next time. Or let's say if somebody had a difficulty and I actually had a solution for once, I was able to share that and maybe alleviate some of that stress from that other instructor. Also, I like the fact that we were able to share lesson ideas. So the first call that we had, I was pretty um, nervous about sharing my lesson plan because I was new at lesson planning. So I wasn't really sure if I was doing things correctly. I didn't know if I was able to, if I had good ideas. So I was really excited to hear about everybody else's ideas. And the first thing that really I got really excited about was um, when Somebody said that in their regular INFT courses, they use a computer. So they bring in an old computer, and they let the students have a screwdriver and tools and take apart the computer so they're able to identify the specific parts in the computer. And I was like, wow, that's a really great idea. And um, so then Jim actually allowed me to get a computer from Brad, the IT guy, and that was one of my favorite classes that I had. I actually used it again. I'm teaching a 15-week INFT course, and I used that idea as well. So I like the fact that we were able to share ideas because it, it gave me, okay, I'm going to use that idea. Or I wasn't really sure how my idea was going to work, but because you've done it successfully before, then I know that it's going to be okay when I do it. Um, and these are some quotes that JT, um, I was able to view JT's slides actually too before I made my presentation. And he had a lot of student testimonials and teacher testimonials and quotes that I am going to share with you that some of, I picked out some of my favorite ones. But um, a couple of the calls included I found great YouTube videos on this. So if you're introducing a topic, maybe um, sometimes in INFT, um, I'm sure this happens maybe in science or math, that sometimes you are just kind of stuck with dry facts. So maybe a YouTube video explaining different things is uh, more interesting to the students. So I found a good uh, YouTube video that describes this very interestingly. So I'm going to use that in one of my classes too. Um, have two students role play. I really liked this scenario too. I also actually liked, um, and this was not my idea, but I can't remember exactly where I heard this one. I think it was from a call though, that have the student come up and teach. So have a lesson, a guided practice, and have them go through step-by-steps with your students. One that helped me make sure that what I was teaching the students resonated with them so they were actually able to do that. Also by teaching things that helped the student learn because they had explained to their classmates what exactly they were doing. And I was also able to rock around and watch the other students follow along. Because sometimes, you know, when you're on a computer and you're guiding through, that gets lost. So you know, I, I know that I had a difficulty when I was showing something, especially in Excel, I, the students were looking at me and it looked like they were understanding, but unless I really stopped what I was doing and walked around and made sure that they were specifically at where I wanted them to be, it's, it's hard to see where exactly they are. But by having another student show them, I was able to walk around and see where the students were getting stuck or that they were actually completing the work and then they knew what they were doing. And I was also there for them if they had a question because a lot of them sometimes are a little bit embarrassed initially to ask questions and I was right there for them to whisper you know what the what is she doing what is going on so that was one of my favorite things to do and then again how I said bring the old computer in I really liked bringing in that old computer and showing them how to take apart they got really excited using the tools in my class so I really appreciated that um, activity so the face-to-face -face, everybody has questions about the face-to-face it's you know only three hours long with so many things that you have to go over and that's so many things that you have to go over in a 15 week course but shortening it down to seven that you know initially seemed pretty difficult to me the first week they had that mandatory SSS time and the SSS time was held an hour before each class 
So my class was supposed to start at 7. My SSS time began at 6. The first class, it was mandatory. So they had to come to the SSS time and complete their face-to-face. -face. Each week, I had seven out of my eight students come to the SSS time. So they were actually in there. And at first, it was about completing the assignments. They had questions about the assignments, and they wanted to speak with me. But eventually, it turned into they wanted to question each other. They wanted to see how everybody else did their assignment, and they wanted to get ideas from each other. So it was no longer about asking questions of me. They wanted to ask questions of their peers, and they wanted to figure out things as a group themselves. So I found that really inspiring because they were able to not only form that community and get that cohort, but they were able to learn how to troubleshoot things on their own before coming to me. Um, so again, the strength in cohorts. My particular group exchanged cell phone numbers on the first day. And I had a lot of students say that they were going to continue to talk to each other and talk each other through their, their courses, their sessions, and into graduation. And that was really great to see that these students were coming together. They knew that they were going to face some challenges. And they knew that they can count on each other for maybe it's just emotional support or support and asking questions in their completed assignments. Um, in the SSS time, like I had mentioned before, I really tried to focus on using activities that I knew were going to be beneficial to them for their after instruction assignments. So even if it was just taking, let's say it's the Word, you know, the Word document, and I know that they have to write a memo in Word, and they're going to have to do these things. They're going to have to make a, they're going to have to make bullet points. They're going to have to change their margins. They're going to have to italicize something, and they're going to have to create a table. And this is what the topic was going to be. So what I like to do is take the, those specific instructions and maybe tweak it a little bit. So maybe say that I want them to bold something rather than italicize or change the color. And instead of a table that has four cells, I'm going to have them make it eight cells or what have you. Change it around a little bit, find a new topic, and then go through step by step what they can do. So that way they can, number one, start to learn the skills that they're going to need in their after instruction activity. But when I start to get those panicked emails, I can say, you did this successfully before. I know you can do it. And they had proof that they were able to do that. So I, find that, I found that that worked well for me. Also, what somebody suggested on one of the phone calls that I found very helpful was I used about 10 to 15 minutes at the end of each face-to-face -face time to show them exactly what they were going to have to do in the online session. So I went into the before virtual. And I said, this is everything that you're going to have to do in before virtual. This is how you're going to have to submit things. For uh, my particular class, they sometimes had to email me things, or they had to submit it through a link. So I said, OK, in this particular assignment, you are going to be emailing me the assignment. But in this assignment, this is where you're going to upload it onto Blackboard. We also had the students separate into different groups. So I was able to show them how they could submit something as a group. So it was very helpful not only for them to see the actual assignments, but also how they are going to get it to me in order to make sure that they um, can move on to the next section. So if they were completing something in virtual, they were able to move on to the after instruction assignments. We were also given a lot of resources. So not only the calls, but the academic reference room as well on Blackboard was very helpful. So I don't know if anybody got to check that out, but it, there is a blended learning section that shows you um, the training presentations, the model, um, terminology, and an instructor toolbox for classroom strategies. Also, what the ARR did was it encompassed a lot of the things that the textbook had. So if I ran into an issue where um, a file wasn't loaded onto the Blackboard shell that they needed for that assignment, I could go into that ARR and find it and email it to everybody. So that way I didn't have to panically try to email um, the, the IT services and try to get it into the Blackboard shell or to you know, have my students be worried about whether they're going to complete everything on time and successfully. I was just able to say, OK, I'm going to email you this. Don't worry about it. You know, Everything will be all right. So I found that Blackboard had many different useful resources on there as well. So obviously, with a new model of training, especially when you are dealing with um, first semester students, new students, 
and it's mainly online, you're going to have some challenges. One of the main things that I found to be very challenging, specifically for me, was keeping up with the communications. When students, I find, are new to learning, um, I, had a, I had a lot of students come back to school. So they, were, um, they already had working experience. They weren't right out of high school, a traditional student. So they had been away from the learning environment for a little while, and they were just nervous about getting into learning in general. And then they had to do something that was new. I told them that that was a new model as well. So I said, we're going to be learning this together. Don't worry about it. You know, thinking that would calm them down. Um, that didn't exactly work as well as I planned. But um, so keeping up with the communication, I obviously with a seven and a half week class, you have to make sure that your presence is known. Every time somebody's emailing you, you have to make sure that you have a quick response to them. Not only that you just have to make your presence known, but if they had a question about a particular assignment, they weren't able to move on. So if they weren't able to complete an assignment, then that delayed them from moving on to everything else that they had to get done before the next class session. So I had to make sure that each communication was met with not only a response, but help. Especially in an INFT class, they didn't just have a question where I can just give them a simple response. I had to pull out my book, pull up the activity, and see exactly where they were stuck. So I actually um, found myself going through the steps and completing the activity to find out where they're having the issue and then screenshotting them. So imagine getting you know, that type of email eight time, from eight students, but each student's emailing you about four to five times. And I think it's my fault because I showed them how to use the high importance on emails. So I suggest not doing that. But <laughs> because everything is high importance. But I would receive a lot of emails and it would be within a matter of a couple hours. So on a Friday night, I would look at my email, you know, close it down around eight o'clock thinking, I'll be okay, you know, looking at it tomorrow morning. And I would wake up on Saturday morning, let's say, you know, I'd look at my email around eight and nine eight or nine o'clock, and I would probably have you know, 10 emails and, you know, from two students. And they're all high importance and they're all asking, you know, did you receive my last email? Or I have another question on this because I try to move on without doing this stuff and then I couldn't figure it out and I got myself stuck and the undo button didn't work and now I'm stuck and I have to do everything over and I just need help. I was like, oh, you know, debating whether or not just to pretend I didn't see it and come back to it or just really focusing on, okay, I'm going to have to help this person out. So. I did a lot of screenshotting, for sure. The snipping tool is my best friend. And I definitely found it challenging to make time to go through step by step and ensuring the students, you know, that I'm, I'll get them through it and, you know, just go through step by step, making sure that everything is addressed. I also had um, a challenge keeping up with grading assignments. Um, and that kind of has to do with the adaptive release as well. So. There were some instances where I had to grade their part of the assignment before they were able to move on. So in a sense, if I wasn't grading quickly enough, they weren't able to complete their work. So it didn't matter if they set, two, you know, set aside two hours on Friday. If I didn't look in that realm of two hours that they set aside, they weren't able to go on. So I felt that I was... Um, I had to keep on going in there and making sure that I was grading everything and that that poses a challenge you know when you want to have a life other than just this particular class. I also had other classes too that I had to worry about so um, keeping up with you know both things it really um, made me focus on time management for sure. Um, also with it being a new model it's learning for everybody so it's not just learning for the students but it's learning for the instructors and it's learning for you know systems as well finding out what works what doesn't and um, how we're going to keep everything moving you know along. I found it really helpful to be transparent um, with the students too when they were saying well this link isn't working why isn't this working and I say you know we're all learning together so you have to make sure that you are you know giving everybody you know a chance to rectify this for you in order to make sure that you're successful because that's all we want is for you to be successful um, I found that you know being a new instructor in a new model as well particularly challenging because you know, usually I could just sit there and I always ask Sam and Allie, you know, what do you guys think? I don't know what I'm doing. You know, do you have any suggestions? And they were always able to help. The same thing I would text Leah and say, 
okay, you know, I have my first blended class today. You know, what are you going to do for your blended class? And she said, oh, I'm not actually um, teaching the blended anymore. Go, oh, okay, so I don't really have any instructor friends that I can lean on right now. But um, like I said, that's where the calls came in, and they were really helpful to me when learning this new model. I spoke about the technological difficulties, again, making sure that the links are going where they're supposed to go and making sure that the files were up there were crucial to my particular class. I'm imagining that will be the case for all of the classes as well. But also having that backup resource that in ARR, I knew that I was able to find the files and email them to my students. So there was a solution as far as te technical difficulties. I put the question on there, what counts? Because that was also raised into a call. Now, none of my students um, mentioned this at all, but one of the other instructors ran into this. There's a lot of guided practice that didn't count for a grade. So um, the students would complete something and they would email it to me and I was able to check to see it, how they were doing, if they knew what they were doing, if they were going to be successful in the graded assignment. But I guess a lot of students were asking, why am I doing this, or is this going to count for a grade? So that's another challenge that you have to meet, and you have to try to explain to somebody that's already overwhelmed, that's a new student, why you're doing this guided practice that's not going to count for a grade. Because sometimes to them, they don't see a point to it. But on the bright side, it, there are some positives to the blended style of learning. Um, it definitely built a strong community, especially within my um, classroom. But not only that, I felt that I was connected more to um, other teachers as well so at, during the calls, um, other teachers that I wouldn't have known because we had the calls from you know all the areas of Bryan and Stratton. So I was able to feel like I was a part of the Bryan and Stratton community too. Um, I had not only high participation as far as emailing was concerned, but the students were really into all of the activities that we were doing. And I had all of the students um, with the, the instructor switching, you know, to so the student became the instructor, all of them wanted to be in the rotation. I was only going to use that activity a couple times because I thought that nobody would want to go up there, but all of them were begging me to go up there and do it. So I had a really strong group that participated in all the activities, and I felt that um, being not only a part of that smaller classroom, but identifying with each other that we're gonna go through the same thing, we're gonna have the same challenges, but we're gonna help each other get through this together, that encouraged them to participate in the classes as well. And the adaptive release. So I initially said before, I don't think that this adaptive release is a good idea. They should be able to get everything all at once and do everything you know, how they see fit. But I really thought at the end that the adaptive release was a good thing. Not only because it allowed them to move along in you know, gather those skills that they were going to need for that after instruction assignment, but they're already overwhelmed enough. So by having too many things thrown at them and all of these assignments, they know they're going to have the assignments, but actually seeing all of the assignments sometimes was a little bit overwhelming. So I thought that just going through step by step and saying, okay, after you complete this step, then you're going to move on to the next step, and then the next step was a little bit calming and um, soothing to the students that they didn't have everything thrown in at once. Um, these are several quotes that I took from JT that the teachers brought up. So in their testimonials, and we had to write testimonials on what we thought, um, I pulled some of my favorite quotes. The teamwork and support provided in addressing Blackboard issues has been very comforting. I definitely related to that as I previously mentioned. Students love the independence and flexibility of completing their work at their own pace. So again, how I was saying that they were able to determine in their week when they were going to complete their work rather than having to attend several classes a week. The students also um, responded positively. I myself had two student testimonials that were very positive, and a lot of it focused on not only the flexibility, but the strong relationship they had amongst themselves and with their instructors as well. So one of the students, um, said, while I find the class very challenging at times, the good relationship I have with my classmates and our close means of communication is most beneficial. So by exchanging information, by being able to text each other, email each other, that was really um, a sense of positive and a sense of community within this uh, model. 
So if I had any advice to instructors teaching this model, whether it's going to be in next session or um, going along through the semesters, what I would generally say is just, you know, these four things. You got to be way ahead of your students. I found myself in one of the weeks um, kind of going, I knew everything that they were going to have to be completing in that particular week, but I found that they were asking questions that I didn't even think of or I didn't, wasn't really sure what they were talking about. I'm like, where is that again? Let me look this up. And that didn't work out so well that week. Um, so I, you just always have to be way ahead of your students. You have to know what's coming and you have to be prepared of what questions could come up. Also be flexible. So, you know, sometimes the links aren't going to work and sometimes the files aren't going to be there. And instead of just worrying about it, you just kind of have to say, okay, well, we're going to do this a different way. I had one student and I don't know how she managed to do this every time, but in Blackboard when she tried to submit from her laptop, it always came up as a blank copy. But she would come to class and she would show me on her zip file that here, here's all my work and it was dated, you know, when it was due. So I knew she wasn't just doing it and showing me just because she didn't want to meet the deadline. For whatever reason, it wasn't uploading on Blackboard for her. But she could put her zip dive in and upload it into Blackboard on the Ryan and Stratton computer. So I don't know really what was going on there with her. But at the end of you know, the week, so that's kind of what we did. She either emailed them, them to me or she, we just waited and then I saw the date that she did the assignment and then we just uploaded it together. Where um, that she started to panic was, well, I have assignments due after our final meeting and we're not going to be able to go through this step by step. And I said, okay, well, that's okay. You're just going to have to email me and you know, we'll figure it out. Maybe I can try to figure a way to upload for you. So you really had to be flexible. Well, this is the way that they were supposed to submit it, so they submit it this way. Well, no, sometimes that doesn't work out for every student, so you had to kind of roll with the punches and see how it was going to work for that particular student. Be available. So like I said, I got a lot of panicked emails on the weekends, and I just had to make sure that I was available to my students to you know, calm them down if I didn't have enough time you know, in that particular day, maybe I had a lot of classes that day, um, to go through step by step. I'll say, okay, make sure that you're in SSS time, and I'll be available for you to walk through this assignment that you were having trouble with that we couldn't figure out over email. And be transparent. So, not hiding the fact that this is a new model, not hiding the fact that I had never taught the blended model. Now, I didn't share all my secrets. I didn't tell them I just started in May. But um, I did make sure that they knew that everybody was new at this particular model and that you know we were trying out things and we're just gonna do the best for you to give you the best course and education that we could. So does any, oh, thank you. <laughs> So does anybody have any questions for me? Okay, thank you. Oh, yes. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs>